You might have heard the terms Bridgeport, Streetport, Jport, and many more in relation to rotaries. But how does porting a rotary engine actually work? This is your standard two-rotor Wankel engine. It's important to know that most rotary engines will feature the intake port on the irons with the exhaust port on the housings. The RX-8's Renesis engine, however, is set up a little bit differently, placing both intake and exhaust ports on the same iron. In a rotary, air enters the iron via the intake port just like a piston engine, but because there's no camshaft, there's no way to change timing or alter cams to increase power, and that's where porting steps in. At its core, porting involves increasing the size of the intake and sometimes exhaust ports to allow the air-fuel mixture to enter and exit the chamber quicker, making more power. This very often involves creating overlap, i.e. the intake and exhaust port are both open at the same time. As the exhaust gases rush out, they help to push the fresh air-fuel mixture into the chamber quicker. The side effect of this is the iconic rotary brap. Porting is done in a few different ways. A street port simply involves increasing the port's stock size to bring the mixture in earlier. A monster street port or extended port pulls the openings even further open, beginning to cause overlap. A bridge port involves cutting an eyebrow above the original intake port, allowing the charge to enter the chamber earlier. The reason the bridge is left in is to allow the side seals of the rotor to slide over the top and not fall out. A J port expands upwards so far that it can even invade the water jacket, requiring it to be blocked off. The ultimate form of porting is usually seen as the peripheral port. This involves doing away with the ports on the iron, and instead creating a whole new port on the housings, allowing for a massive amount of overlap and high-end power. While you're unlikely to see J-ports and peripheral ports on a road car, bridge and street porting are commonplace when doing an inevitable rotary rebuild. Portings can be mixed and matched, so for instance you might choose to go with a bridge port and extend the intake and exhaust ports too. It's all up to how drivable you want the car to be.